Adam Kaplan is here. What does Adam Kaplan expect to see tomorrow night from the Eagles? Do the starters need to play in this preseason matchup at Baltimore against the Ravens? Let's bring Adam Kaplan in from the Inside the Birds podcast and see what he's thinking as the Eagles start off the 2023 season, uh, preseason, I should say, in Baltimore. Happy Friday to you, Adam. What's going on, bud? Yeah, I'm looking forward to the first full slate of preseason games. We had a couple last night, and just, just you know, I've been on this tour and with the Jets and Panthers this week um, in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and you know, I'm on the road again next week. But talking to coaches, especially Mike, it's really interesting. When we had four preseason games, most teams universally did this the same. The first week, first game, the starters wouldn't play. Second week, they play up to a quarter. The third game, they play up to a half. That was the dress rehearsal game. The fourth game, they wouldn't play. Well, they don't do that anymore. Two reasons. You've got joint practices are really big now. Uh, oh, like well over 20 teams practice with each other. Uh, so the starters basically for most teams play very little, if at all, in the preseason. And Because the, the, the way I understand it, the, the joint practices are heavier for a practice standpoint than the regular practices. And they love going against another team. So when it gets to this team, the Eagles... Remember last year, the first game, and I don't know why, I still never got a straight answer. So the starters played eight snaps, right? They never played again after that. So they just played in the first game, eight snaps, and got them out of there, which is a series. It's just kind of weird. I, I, there's no, and, and they're not the only team that's doing this. Some teams, like I was talking to the Jets, sounds like it's going to be Zach Wilson who starts tonight and plays a lot. But they'll, they'll roll in uh, Tim Boyle, also a backup quarterback. It just depends on, on which team you talk to, Mike. It, uh, it's just really interesting the way that they don't view preseason like they used to. And, again, it's kind of like if, the, if the, the head coach thinks they need work. I'll give you one more nugget. So when Andy Reid was here, Andy would tell me. I seem to ask him this every summer. Okay, Andy, what's your stance on preseason? Well, it's my job to get my starter to the, to, to, uh, to, to the regular season healthy, right? So what you would see is McNabb might play a series. I've seen him take two snaps. He would get very little work, and then they get him out of there. So it's just not like that anymore. And Andy, by the way, he's playing the starters this week. I, from what I, what I was reading, it sounds like they're going to play mm-hmm. with the Chiefs. So, again, things have changed. Yeah, I remember last year uh, Hertz played. He got uh, hit on his way out of bounds, and then we never saw him again. So <laughs> yeah. uh, He plays. Yeah, yeah. That, that was it for him, and uh, I would imagine we don't see him tomorrow night. But do the starters need to play? Are they, are they handling this wrong? It's a good question, Mike. When, when, now, see – this is different. Last year, their 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 the roster is mostly set. You could you, you could look at it. It's okay. These guys are going to start the season. Not so much. Is Reed Blankenship's the only known guy? Uh, although I believe it's going to be Terrell Emmons uh, at the end of it. We know Reed Blankenship will start at safety. We know we know who the two starting corners are. Josh Job. We we have a good feeling it's going to be a third outside corner over Gritty Williams. It's not set yet, so these guys will play. And we'll get in in a minute who 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 we expect to, at all over the roster, who needs to play and what and and how these battles will, will go out there. But look, AJ Brown and Devontae Smith do not need to play. Mylotta doesn't need to play. Dickerson, Kelsey, Lane Johnson, now Cam Jurgens does he really need to play? Well, right now he looks like he's going to be the starter at right guard at least week one. Why would you play him and not the other four starters? You you have to. It, it, that's the thing that Sirianna and staff have to ask themselves because. If Hurts surprisingly plays, then everybody's got to start. You, you never put your starting the, – the coaches have told me this over the years. You never put your starting quarterback out there for the preseason behind a, a number two offensive line. You just don't do that. So if, Her, if Hurts is playing, then the starting unit's got to be playing. If they're not, why would Jurgens play? It would make no sense to me. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, you definitely don't want to see Hurts out there with that backup unit uh, from the offensive line. But we'll see. Uh, how many starters on the offensive side of the ball? Running backs, I, I, what do you think there? I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, you got five guys you're choosing from. Well, we don't know who the starter is. We, we, and again, starter only means who's going to be out there for the, most, for the first play of the game. That's technically what it means. But it's really what's, it's, a, it's, it's a total committee, total rotation, Mike. They're still figuring out, okay, we know Kenny Gainwell could be hurry up back. He's been a goal line back, which we didn't know when he was drafted out of Memphis that he would do anything like that, but he's kind of morphed into that under the staff. This is staff, as we first reported right after the draft, that the staff was heavily involved in Gainwell being drafted. They didn't make the call, but they pushed the front office. They really liked him. You got DeAndre Swift, to, and I'm still going to, you know, I've been on record saying this. We'll see what happens. Obviously, he's got to stay healthy. Average touches per game, I'm giving Swift over Gainwell and over 
who else? We, we don't know whoever else. We don't know about – we have no idea what Boston Scott's role is going to be unless it's against the Giants, Mike. So, and look, they continue to talk up Trey Sermon. So we know it's five backs for four, four spots. And Rashad Penny, we know he won't catch the football. That eliminates him from that third down roll that Swift and Gamewell will have. And the hurry-up roll, obviously, with those two backs. We just don't know about Penny. Like what we, He's come on from what we are told the last week, but we just don't know, Mike, what his exact role will be. So you asked about the running backs. I'm fascinated to see tomorrow night, Mike. That's, that's the one position. Like, would you really expose DeAndre Swift with the kind of role he's going to have a big role and with his injury history? I would say no. You know who Kenny Gainwell is. Do you really need to play him? Uh, we, we, again, we don't know. Will he average five touches a game, seven or 12? We don't know that yet, and they don't either. They're working through that. So, and then Trey, here's the guys who I know who will play for sure. Trey Sermon and Kenny Brooks will play. Does Boston Scott need to play a lot? You need to have at least three backs playing in, in a preseason game because you, you can't go into a game with just two. The question is, what 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 will the roles be for this game if these guys play? And that that's that's the issue. Yeah, and there's a lot, to, uh, you know, what to expect throughout this depth chart and playing time, and some guys that you'll be watching on both sides of the ball in these roles. Okay, here we go: Alameda Sakias, Quez Watkins, Joe Nada. We've been to. I'm sorry, Joe Ingata. It's I asked the Eagles PR staff about how to pronounce it. It's Ingata who's been the He's been sort of like, not quite to the degree, but you remember Reed Blankenship was the guy that, you know, we were on Inside the Birds, we called would make the team. You know, by the second week, August, we said, we're, he's making it. It's the only thing we know about these younger players. I'm not willing to say that with Ngata, but he definitely has been a star of training camp, really from the very first practice. So he's got a lot of work with the twos. Um, so, Mike, you're going to watch him. Oh, by the way, now, we don't know that he's playing, but he, got, he practiced this week, Devin Allen, so he's going to have to play in the preseason. Uh, so those guys, uh, Josh Sills, by the way, who's just coming back, you know, as you know, he's off the commissioner's exemplist. The guys that I want to watch this week are those receivers, Josh Sills, because remember he made the team last year, but then of course he had the off the field issue. So we went the commissioner's exemplist. Josh Andrews has got to play. He, he's on the running for the backup center. Grant Calcaterra versus Dan Arnold versus Tyree Jackson. Watch that match. Watch that. That's a battle. Absolutely. Uh, Ian, not that they're, we'll see, they may keep three quarterbacks. Someone's going to the practice squad if both get cut, but Tanner McKee versus Ian Book. Defensively, Jalen Carter, I would think, would play in this game. Why not? He's not definitely a starter. We know he's going to be one of the top three D tackles. Zach Cunningham and Miles Jack, absolutely. If they, if they think physically they're ready, they sh- then, then they'll play. They, they're vying for, obviously, potential starting job or one of the top backup jobs. Nolan Smith, mention him. We need to mention him, rather. We need to see him play. Van, ben Van Sumeren, who they paid a lot as an undrafted free agent. And then, finally, Mike, Josh Job, Kaylee Ringo, J- Justin Evans, Mario Goodrich, who's had a good camp, Makai Gardner, who, who's coming on here, Eli Ricks, th- those guys, and, of course, what they want to do with Kavon Wallace and, and Blankenship doesn't need to play. We'll see how they handle that. But look, there, there are more. Uns- there's more. Uns- oh, and I should mention Marlon Tui Pelo to in Contivia Street, more Ojomo and Noel Ellis. But the thing is, Mike, there's so much uncertainty about about the backup rotations. They don't know yet. The coaches don't know yet. They're working through it, and that's the beauty of this training camp. We told you two months ago this is going to be the most competition they've had since '17. And I think that's still held up. Um, real quick, uh, Adam Kaplan from Inside the Birds podcast. Do we anticipate seeing? Uh, the new linebackers, uh, N'Kobe Dean. Yeah. Oh, that will. I don't know about Dean, Mike, because he's just. I know he started working back this week pretty well. Got a lot of reps. It's a great question. I don't know what they're going to do with Dean in this game. And, and then the question is, does he need to really play in the preseason? If he plays, I wouldn't think because he's coming off of an injury that was kept him out over a week. They didn't play very much. But as I said he, uh, a couple minutes ago, they really got to k- get a look at Jack and Cunningham. They were not with the team this off season. I don't know physically because they just got here whether they'll be able to play or if they play how much they can play, but they got to play by the second. They got to play certainly next week in the second preseason game. Now, now one thing I would tell you with these joint practices, I know the Eagles also looked at this last year from talking to them. One of the reasons why they didn't play the starters very much, if at all, in the preseason, is because they had the joint practices against Cleveland last year and against Miami. Well, they've got Cleveland again, and they got the Colts for one, and they got the Cleveland for two. 
And don't forget, they've got, what, next Thursday, Mike, uh, Mike is, is their next preseason game. So they've got so much work next week. Why would they play the starters at all in this game? But we'll see. Well, I think, yeah, you, you know, I think Sirianni was kind of asked about that. You know, you got these joint practices. You're playing Saturday night, and then Cleveland's here on Monday. You're going to be doing joint practices a couple days, and then you play them Thursday night. I mean, how much uh, how much live action could you really ask these guys to do? That's why it kind of indicates to me you're not going to see a lot uh, from the starters tomorrow night, if anything. Yeah, exactly. I, I'd be very surprised. I never say never with the stuff, but it just – it's – they got. They have so many battle. They have so many decisions to make with this roster. The bottom. It's great. The bottom eight to ten spots. No, they have no idea who those guys are going to be yet. They have. The, they know the guys are in the running, but they don't know yet. And that's the beauty of this. And we'll see what happens. Well, and, and you know, we were talking about this earlier, maybe earlier in the week, uh, Adam. Which was there's going to be guys that don't make this roster uh, that teams are going to be lining up to try to get. Yeah, players don't get. You usually see anywhere from a dozen to two dozen players get claimed off waivers. Last year's, I think, group was not a lot over on the National Football League, but yeah, I mean, look, if Penny gets clipped, if he gets cut, certainly a team, he's like the guaranteed money, the Eagles would own the rest of the guaranteed money, but which is very minimal, less than 600 grand. Oh, by the way, um, boy, the only 25 grand guaranteed money per, I looked, got that a couple days ago, Mike, we'll talk more about this on Inside the Birds on Money, but guaranteed money, I believe, Without looking at my email, but from what was sent to me, Miles Jack and Cunningham each got, I think, twenty five grand guaranteed at signing, uh, which is kind of low. But again, I don't know how much leverage they had. And we'll we'll break down the rest of their contract on the Monday show. There there's some upside to it, but um, we'll see what happens. But it's going to be fascinating, Mike. Cause I like this because we, you know, these these training camps the last couple of years on our show have been sort of mundane because we, other than watching Hertz's progression, there have not been a lot of camp battles. There's so many. Backup camp battles, Mike. It's been fascinating. Last one, uh, battle. Punter, who's going to do it? Yeah, it's open. We're told it's still open with Sipos. Uh, still has the advantage. What we're told is just watch the preseason games. That'll tell, tell them a lot, and obviously the joint practices. All right, Adam Kaplan, it all starts tomorrow night. You can listen to the game right here on 97.3 ESPN. As the Eagles look to snap a 23-game preseason win streak of the Baltimore Ravens, Mel Reese and Mike Quick have the call starting at 7 o'clock. Adam, enjoy the game, man. Thank you.